Hello adventures, my name's Tyler. And I'm Richard. On today's episode, we're going over our Gen Con 2024 survival guide. Welcome to True Strike. Howdy, folks, and welcome back to the show. Howdy. It's that time of year again. Gen Con is upon us. That it is. Gen Con 2024, to be exact. And we wanted to go over our uh, little survival guide, at least what we think is important when considering coming to Gen Con. Uh, because you should be considering coming to Gen Con if you aren't already. Well, it's getting kind of close. If you're considering going now, woo! I mean, everything's tough. possible. You could... You could you can make it happen, <laughs> but it's going to be a little tougher. Definitely recommend planning a little in advance. But if this is your first time attending, this is for you. Yeah. If it's been a while since you've attended or if you just want a refresher, this is for you as well. Welcome. Yeah. And we talk like we're extreme experts on this situation uh, when this is our second year attending. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. It, uh, it changes you. It changes you as a person. <laughs> so... Uh, for real, we wanted to make this because last year we went into it not prepared. Uh, you know, we've been to conventions before we've done packs and other like gaming expos and things like that. This was its own beast. <laughs> yeah. There was a lot of stuff that I wish I had known uh, in advance yep. and we would have been a lot more prepared had we known even half of the stuff that we're going to talk about. Yeah. So, so yeah. right, we got a pretty long list. We'll get through uh, as much of this as we can. First, we wanted to go over hotels. This is something where, if like I mentioned, like it gets it's kind of kind of close. If you don't already have a hotel booked, good luck. It's gonna be <laughs> rough. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you are attending for the first time and you manage to like get a connecting hotel or something, I'm so jealous of you. Oh man. That was high on my list after we talked about coming back yep. from Gen Con last year was getting a connecting hotel. And I really was planning on getting a connecting hotel. But when the lottery hit, that, oh no, there yep. was not even an option left. So it wasn't even down to just like the pricing and being priced out of it. It just wasn't even an option anymore unless I went to the hotel independently outside of block mm -hmm. and got a hotel room. And at that point, pricing definitely made it out of the option right because yeah those rooms are not cheap if you're not in the gen con pricing block yeah and that's important and if that the lottery is confusing you're like oh what's the lottery if you get your badge early enough you mm -hmm. can sign up essentially to be entered into this lottery where they will be like hey you can book a block rate hotel at this time and you go in there and if there's something left wonderful you grab it you snag it you pay for it later a plus you're in our situation, you enter, you hope, and you there's some left. They're out of your price range. <laughs> yeah, out of your price range, yeah. So uh, we ended up settling on something that was very close to where we stayed last year. Yeah, yeah, 10-minute um, drive-ish. Yeah, a 10-minute drive, so we are going to drive a little bit to get there. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it's not connecting. It would be great if it was. Right. I wish it was, but it's not. Um, so we'll make do. Yep, and the big thing about the Connect Hotels and why that's so cool, one, not only are you just walking distance right you yeah. just wake up walk downstairs would be great these hotels that are connected the events and panels and things happen in them so even just attending gen con if you're going to events you're going to end up in these hotels at some point yeah so that and just the hallways basically you know are always live there's people out there playing games it it's going to be rad we're going to spend time at hotels even though we're not staying there yep I, <laughs> we'll just do the sleeping you know 10, 15 minutes away. Yeah. Um, but yeah, enough about that. Badge pickup. If you're getting there Wednesday, you're showing up in Indianapolis Wednesday afternoon, highly recommend grabbing your badge as like your first thing, essentially. Having it knocked out, it, even though the line may seem kind of intense Wednesday, it's not that bad. Oh, no, it it's goes not pretty bad quick. At all. Yeah. And it was just going to get busier and busier and busier throughout Wednesday. But if you try getting your, you know, badge Thursday morning, Friday morning, Saturday morning, oh my gosh, Saturday morning, it's going to be pretty nuts. So definitely recommend getting this as soon as you can. A lot of you probably had it shipped to you. 
So, A, wonderful. You probably have all this already taken care of. Those of us <laughs> that are doing will call, you definitely want to you get that as early as you can. Yeah, now correct me if I'm wrong. When you have it shipped to you, that doesn't include your generic tickets, right? So you still mm. have to go through a line. Your generic tickets or event tickets? Event but tickets. Yeah. Event tickets, uh, if you have them already paid for and stuff, those will be shipped with you, I believe. Yeah. But if you order any additional, any additional after yeah. that cutoff date, yeah, you'll have yeah, to pick them up. Yeah, you still have to pick them up. Mm -hmm. yep. So, yeah, definitely uh, hit up that badge pickup line. Yeah, and it is no joke, uh, a very long line the closer to the weekend that you get. Yeah. Because I thought it was a, a pretty significant line the last time we picked up. Uh, but when we got there the following morning and even the morning after that, it just kept getting longer and scary, scary longer. It's insane. Yeah. So it went from, I think we waited in line for maybe 25 minutes or so. And that I works, saw yeah. that line had to have been at least an hour, two hours, um, very easily. Shortly just, after and that. you don't want to be, you know, in that line for an hour plus Saturday morning. Yeah. Trying to get your badge. I mean, if you have to, I understand, right? If you can, if you've only got a one day, if you're just going to, you know, be there Saturday which I'm sure a lot of you will be Saturday, the Saturday only badge sold out. If you're getting there Friday, pick it up Friday. Yeah. Go snag that. You know, you can get into um, the, you know, the main convention without the badge. Uh, you just need that to really get to the exhibit hall and stuff like that. So you can get in Friday while the rest of the show is going on and, and pick up your badge. Highly recommend doing it. Yeah. Just as soon as you can try not to do it the morning of, Gen Con of the day you're visiting or week that you're visiting. Now, while you're picking up and you mentioned this with the tickets, while you're picking up your badge, uh, make sure you have your, you know, government issue ID with you. That's what they're going to use. They're going to take that, go grab all your stuff. They're going to hand you like a packet, right? It's going to have your like a little lanyard thing probably with your, uh, with your ID and your badge. There's going to be like a barcode on this badge. That is not, to be removed that is it's a sticker it is part of the badge you rip that that is an issue um <laughs> like customer support no or if you have you know you accidentally rip it off or sonar or whatever uh the what i'm really getting to here is in that little packet they're going to have all of your events that you've signed up for now where it gets interesting and like i said our first time experiencing gen con this was different because we'd been to pax before and stuff like that where if there's a panel you want to, you know, watch or go to or anything like that, you uh, go to it. You just go. <laughs> you get in line. You get in line. You get in the panel. Just, exactly. Uh, this, no. You need tickets for, like, everything. Um, usually in advance. There are thousands and thousands of events, and each of them only have so many tickets available. So you need to get these. Uh, the farther out in advance you get them, the better. A lot of them sell out. Uh, instantly yes. in some in some cases uh, others not so much there are definitely still like I said thousands of them so there's still a lot available and a lot of them are free some of them are not even the free ones though you need to go add your cart if you're signed up as friends with somebody your whole group you can just add you know tickets for everybody and check it all at once to make sure you all get them but have your tickets like secured before going to Gen Con like try to try to knock this out immediately um, because you're going to pick up these these tickets with your badge and you don't want to have to wait in line again after you've already went through this process and you're like, oh, crap, I don't have any a pay, you know, event tickets. You got to do it again. Uh, now we mentioned something selling out. This is where generic tickets come into play. You'll notice most events that do have a cost. Uh, are in two dollar increments. It's because each generic ticket is two dollars. Yeah. Now let's say, uh, hypothetically, Richard had a panel where he's gonna be playing uh, a six string and teaching like recorder lessons. Well, you could show up to his musical theory class, and maybe you know it already sold out online. But if you had some generic tickets, it was six dollars worth of tickets. So three generic tickets would would equal that right if somebody doesn't show up that had picked up one of those event tickets well after so long of them not being there they'll accept your generics and you'll get into the door same if you're catching a game of dungeons and dragons or um some new board game coming out this year it it generics are how you get in to events that cost money <laughs> that people don't show up for that's yeah. the main thing a lot of people recommend getting like 20 dollars worth of generics 
if there's something you're going to try to catch. Um, we didn't buy any generics last year, and we did, uh, we did fine. I'm probably not going to get any this year, because the events we want to attend, but didn't get to attend, we just found other things to do instead. Yeah. But if you're dead set on trying to get into something, like you really need to do this one game or this one panel, pick some up. Um, if there's any you don't use, just make sure by the last day that you're there, which Sunday is the full cutoff, but the last day that you're there, um, turn them back in and they will issue you a uh, system credit which you can spend on next year's ticket or, you know, events and stuff like that. You don't get a straight up refund, but they do keep track of your credits on your profile. So that's important. Yeah. So it's not really a waste of money if you're planning on doing the Gen Con gig right. long term. Uh, just you got to remember that you have to turn them in. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you will lose those generic tickets. Yes. So if you don't turn them in for your refund, then they just dissipate. One big thing is we don't recommend, because this is money, unless you're never coming back ever again. This is money. Don't just sneak generic tickets into some stranger's backpack. <laughs> because, <laughs> because they won't notice them until it's too late yeah. for them to be usable. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this happened. Yeah. I, I can't remember how many generic tickets it was. I It was... Six? I want to say it was six or eight. Okay. Yeah, that I found in my backpack. We could have used them. <laughs> yeah, we could have used them, but I didn't know that they were in right. there. So somebody managed to slip them into like the slide cover of my backpack. Successful it sleight yeah, of hand. Basically a nice successful sleight of hand check. And I didn't see them until we were in the hotel room basically packing. We were like un look opening our bags, packing things up, making sure <laughs> tickets yeah, just and fell then out I've of your got bag. Generic tickets. And I was like, oh man. <laughs> yeah. So if you're gonna give somebody your generic ticket, hand them to them <laughs> and tell them. Because there are people out there that don't care about the credit or anything like that and they you don't want their generic tickets to go Do to you remember if the something. generic tickets had your name on them? They didn't. Yes, they did have the gentleman's name on them. So I'm not positive if they could use them or not in that case. I don't know. Yeah. So it depends on what kind of game you're going to. Right. Because like uh, one of the games that we did um, was a uh, a small D&D session of Dread. Mm -hmm. um, and when our gentleman took our generic tickets, he wasn't checking IDs or anything like that. He was oh, we didn't saying, have generic yeah. tickets. We had event tickets. No, but he he was taking generic tickets from, from others at the table. Oh, yes. I see. I see. So when those people came to the table, he was like, "All right, you know, this is so and so generic tickets." And then they, you know, rail from them like they were David Buster's ah, and okay. gave him all the generic tickets. He wasn't checking IDs or anything gotcha. like that. So to them, generic tickets are generic tickets. Okay. Uh, so yeah, it doesn't have to be. I, maybe sometimes, like, a, a, maybe I'm the honestly type of not event, sure. They yep. might watch that, but I think the majority of them a generic ticket is a generic ticket okay so in that case if someone hands you generic tickets or you give them away maybe you can use them maybe you can't just keep that in mind yeah. otherwise uh if you want your money back in some form or another because you plan on attending just make sure you turn them in before you leave if gen con is over and you give them a call you're like hey i forgot to do that, nothing's gonna happen you're not getting a credit you're not getting money back yeah you just have some paper tickets to hang up on your wall or something yeah uh, one last thing on ticketed events before mm -hmm. we move on, uh, I wanted to bring up if ticketed events is like your thing, right? And you're looking at events and there are stuff that you're interested in seeing and you're not even sure if you have any downtime at the show, um, watch the socials of the people that you're interested in and yes. also watch the event page because there will be last minute events. That oh, are absolutely. Generated, yep. Um, that are you can't get them now that will come up and there will be only a couple of hours of time for you to jump into those events. You got us into one of those at the last one because yeah. you happen to be watching. You're like, oh, there's a last minute D, &D game going on yep. here and we have a time slot for this. Like, do you feel like watching a game ran by Brenda Lee Mulligan? And we're like, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So it's uh, so pay attention to that stuff if that's something you're interested in. Yeah. If you have the downtime, it's not a bad idea to refresh the events page or to, like I said, watch the socials and people you're interested in. We we actually I'm glad you brought this up for another reason right here. And this kind of goes into uh, our next topic a little bit. There is a difference between some of these tickets, right? You've got the generic tickets and then you've got your main event tickets. Sometimes there are digital tickets. Yes. Uh, where they will just scan your badge and boop, you're in. That's yeah. it. No paper ticket to keep track of. That those are amazing. <laughs> I love that. And that saved our butt with that that D D game. Yeah. Because it was a digital ticket. So we didn't have ticket, to yeah. go get back in line at Will Call or anything like that. Nope. We just walked straight over exactly. and the badge and we were in. A plus. Yeah. Um, so yes, if if you're ever looking at your thing, it specifically says like digital ticket. And you're like, I don't have a ticket for this. That's why it's it, your badge is your ticket. 
Uh, one last thing on this event section of this, you know, survival guide. Try not to book your events too close together. Mm. Some of these involve quite a bit of walking There's to get from hike. one to another. Because the, the convention center itself is massive. And, like I mentioned, some of the events happen in the different hotels, which are not always A to B. Sometimes it's A to B to C to get where you're going. And it's pretty far, and sometimes you got to figure out where you're going ahead of time and everything. And sometimes panels just run long. Yeah. So don't try to have like a 12 to 12.30 followed by a 12.30 to a 2.30 or something because you've got no time. There's nothing. Even if you give yourself like 15 minutes in between, that's close. You got to make sure those events are real close to each other. Yep. We did have to leave one event early yeah, last year. Yeah, we had to leave one event early last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it was supposed to have been done, but it went yeah, over. Yeah, it just went over. Yep. yep. So it happens. Uh, but just try to give your spell self like an hour in between if you can. Um, or at least if they're close together, you know, half an hour should be fine, even less. Yeah. Um, speaking of keeping an eye on some of the events and stuff, the Gen Con mobile app uh, can be a lifesaver for some of that. It also lets you keep track of uh, some of your events that are coming up. It, it has a map of the show floor you can use to help find where some games are located. Sometimes it doesn't help you at all. There's a digital interactive map on there, and uh, it, sometimes a game is being sold by a publisher of like a side branch of a company, not in, you know, at all related to the other company that actually made the game, and it's impossible. <laughs> but sometimes it's awesome. So definitely, just ahead of time, get the Gen Con mobile app. It's it's going to be awesome sometimes. <laughs> yeah. But it doesn't hurt to have it. Exactly. Uh, you want to hit the next couple? Yeah. So the next thing we have here is parking, uh, which is a, a pretty interesting one because of the area that it's in. Uh, there are parking garages around there, and there are some pay parking areas. Um, there one that we actually chose. Uh, do you know the name of it off the top of your head? I do, and I refuse to let people know. Oh, you're so keeping So they don't steal secret. my secret. So there are some places that you can go and pay for parking in the area. I would never do that. Chance parking. Okay. I believe he's completely probably sold out online at this point. Not positive. Uh, last year, we were able to swing some last, uh, last minute parking spot by showing up Wednesday about noonish, And he yes. did have some left. Yeah, he did have a couple left. Because uh, like anything, people do pre-book and then people cancel and everything like that. And he's got a lot to fill. Yes. So if he's got a lot to fill, then he's going to try and fill it as you know, soon as he can. So it's not a, a bad idea to try and hit up some of these places uh, because you can get a pretty good deal. Now, there are parking garages, like I said, all around. Mm -hmm. um, they vary in pricing. It just really depends on how far you're willing to walk. Mm -hmm. There are some hotels in walking distance, too. But again, it's really how far you're willing to walk. The connected hotels, obviously, is the easiest thing. Um, oh, for sure. But being where it is. There's not really a shortage of places to go. It just comes down to the distance and pricing for most of this stuff. Pricing's huge. Uh, even yeah. even the one we go through, Chance, it's not cheap parking. No, it's, it's not, not cheap In parking. fact, we found other ones that were closer for mm -hmm. less money last year. But I really just like the way he runs his parking area. Yeah. Um, and, and I, we booked him again this year, just in advance this yep. time. It's great. It takes us about plus. 10, 15 minutes to walk from him to the convention center. Yeah. While we were walking last year, um, we were walking with people, you know, obviously that are walking to the convention center. Right. And, uh, I had mentioned to you, I believe that some of the people that we were walking with, I was talking to or heard talking had been walking for 45 to 50 minutes yes. already. Yeah. So they were looking at an hour walk Each from where they were uphill to the convention in center. The snow. Which, if you're a hiker, that's great. Me, <laughs> I don't want to walk an hour to that convention center and then spend, you know, eight hours walking around that convention yep. center. Speaking of which, uh, and this could be maybe if you don't secure parking uh, and it's just another option. I see a lot of people mention it. Is parking at the zoo nearby? They oh, say that okay. if you park there... Uh, you basically have to walk like across the parking lot, but you can do it. So people get moderately cheap parking at the zoo. Uh, some people get there early enough before gates even like open oh, at the okay, zoo yeah. and they get free parking at the zoo. Uh, not an endorsement of doing this necessarily, but I've heard people do it. So do it that as you will. Um, and then just it, a little trek and then you can you make your way over there. Yeah. Uh, like I said, haven't done it myself, but I've seen a lot of people recommend that. 
Yeah. And speaking of distance walking, shoes is our next subject. Yeah. And this is one that I left far too long uh, <laughs> because I was all like, I'll just get some shoes. I'll get some new shoes. And uh, now here we are uh, only days away from our leaving for this. And uh, I'm just getting my shoes today. They came today, right? They came yep. today. So I'm going to try them on if they don't fit or they're not great. I'm going to have to figure out a new shoe solution uh, before we get there. Otherwise, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to be barefoot or something. Some steel toe work boots. Yeah. No. But uh, yeah, no, I'm wearing steel toe work boots right now. as like my daily driver. I definitely don't want to wear those for an entire convention weekend. It'll be awful. Um, it's going to be awful. Uh, I'll do it if I have to. You're going to be um, so fast though it's gonna be like goku taking off his weighted like clothing before a fight right and i yeah i don't <laughs> oh yeah because i'm gonna be so used to just steel yeah toe. running steel Pew! toes yeah i'm also gonna be a little bit shorter too because you have very high heels on them oh no you'll be like yeah. seven foot three I instead so I'll, be, I'll be slightly shorter <laughs> but yeah some nice shoes are good uh the convention center is large you're going to be doing a lot of walking there's a lot of steps up and down especially if you're going to events in other hotels yeah. There's a lot of that. Cutting underground from the main convention center to Lucas Oil yeah, Stadium. Yeah, the, the underground the... tunnel and everything like yeah. that. Yeah, there is so much walking. Look, y'all. a good pair of shoes will take you a long way. We cannot overemphasize just how large <laughs> the Indianapolis Convention Center is. It's so it's big. It's huge. It's so big. It... And then when you start to roll in, like you said, the Lucas Oil Stadium, right? Yeah. So you're all like, oh, how can there possibly be more? And then you walk into the Lucas Oil Stadium and like you come out of the door and it's like this bright open stadium and then you're like oh no i have to walk all the way down this stadium to the center of the lucas oil stadium and there's even more walking when we get down there mm -hmm. there's so much stuff Hello. it's huge I'm so excited to get my seventy-five thousand steps a day in yes there is there's <laughs> so much walking so a good pair of shoes will will definitely be on order walking standing in line standing in line yeah yeah yep. all, all that stuff um, the next thing on here is hygiene, which is pretty important, especially when you're considering how many people are at this convention. Full stop, y'all. This is something that shouldn't be an issue. Shouldn't be an issue. Shower at least once a day. Brush your teeth. Wear a deodorant. Do what you got to do to be pleasant to those around you. We're not your parents. <laughs> Wear different clothes every day. But boy, oh boy, <laughs> it is packed. It's there are so many people here. Wild. Look, I'm okay. I'm not a little dude. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Video watchers, you see that. I take up this entire side of the screen. I'm like two of him. Okay. Oh. <laughs> We're gonna sweat. <laughs> Especially uh people of my stature. We're going to sweat. Um it's it's a it's a very close quarter show. You're shoulder to shoulder. It's you so are going packed. to smell Everyone around you, especially if they haven't taken a shower in a day or two. You know, I've heard that this year is going to be way busier than last year. Oh, it's great. It's going to be even more packed. Now, it's not just smelling bad or being clean and stuff like that. Hygiene can go a long way of other things, too. I do recommend you get yourself a, uh, a nice little portable um, hand sanitizer. Oh, absolutely. Right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, banners, Germs. railings, anything you're touching. People are going to be touching everything. You're going to be touching everything. Just imagine, you know, like... You're going to the mall and you go to use the bathroom in there. You know, hundreds of people could have touched that door before you touched it. Thousands. Multiply that times thousands yeah. and thousands <laughs> when you come to this convention yeah. because there are so many people. Uh, and hygiene includes that too. Just making sure that your hands are clean and that you're not going to expose yourself to germs unnecessarily. Longtime listeners know that I got sick last year at this exact mm -hmm. convention. Yep. I came home with con crud. He got the con crud. Yep. Yeah. So trying to avoid that this year. I am already uh, daily dosing some <laughs> vitamin C and stuff. And I shall not be getting the con crud uh, yet. He again. refuses to. I'm not going to get it. No, I'm fine. He didn't lie, you know, last year and he never will. Yeah, never going to go. He's never just too dang healthy. You know why? Hand sanitizer. <laughs> <laughs> and hygiene. Shower. Showered. Yeah. <laughs> so much oh shower. Gosh. Yeah. Uh. You know what? I'm going to skip ahead to this one real quick because I kind of half mentioned Ooh. it. Just right here. Just skipping a little one right here. Go ahead. Uh, Y'all, it's going to be busy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> tickets of our last I checked, what tickets are sold out for? What is, what is this? Friday, Saturday. Or no. I think it was Friday and Saturday. Mm -hmm. And then the four day. Yeah. So the four day there's what? Out. Some Sundays and some Thursdays. And they were like, there will be nothing left at the door. Yeah. Like by the time we get to this convention, everything will be pre-sold. 
It's going to be nuts. If he went there last year on Saturday, which I think was the only day that was sold out last year, I'm going to be like Saturday every day. So buckle up. Uh, just be prepared to wait in some lines. Don't push. Don't shove. Don't run. Be civil. Be civil. Wear your deodorant and sanitize your hands. <laughs> and, you know, have a good time. Yeah. But there's going to be a lot of people there's gonna there. There's going to be a lot of people there. So, yeah. Brace yourself. <laughs> For the opening of the doors oh of the convention gosh. hall. <laughs> yeah. So, if there's something you have to get day one, I get it. If you're going to stand in the crowd and you're going to try to carefully and gently walk forward with the crowd that is also respecting this uh, and the staff of the, you know, the convention center that is you know, directing calm people through the doors like it's going to go, of course. Uh, but if you don't need to be in the door the minute it opens up, I recommend getting up on the second floor and just staring down at the masses. Yeah. Uh, for what is lovingly referred to as the running of the nerds. Uh, as a mass conglomerate of fleshy bodies just shove through these doors all throughout the convention halls. It's nuts. Yeah, it gets crazy really quick. We decided fairly early on that we weren't going to be on floor one. We were not going to be at the front of the doors. And we went and found a nice place up on the balcony um, so that we could watch some of the main doors and take some pictures and stuff like that. And this was very early on. Like we, we got there early and we, you know, wanted to be there early. And at first it was only like a couple of hundred people in front of the door. Yeah. yeah. But the closer it got to opening, the more it got shoulder to shoulder down there. And it got to the point where it was literally, you could not see the floor from the second floor. No, not at all. Like the floor was not visible. There was people everywhere. Nerds as far as the eye can see. (laughs) And if you've ever attended a rope drop at a theme park, Mm -hmm. it's very similar to that. (laughs) Um, Yes. There was just so many people. Uh, not for me. And to, and to be you know clear, like he said, if you there's something you really need to get, then understand it. Get down there on the floor and you do you. We were able to not be on the first floor. So we weren't breaking the doors down. Right. We had the, the first group go through. And we went down, casually got on the escalator, went down, walked past in, walked right in, and then started to walk to the general direction of the places that we were going to be at. Yep. We got to them and got our rope drop air quotes games with very little effort. No, for real. We yeah. and granted, we got lucky in some sense. This is Thursday morning. My number one game was Sky Team. Mm-hmm. We walked in, walked straight to that booth, and what five, ten people after us, they cut off the line. Yep, they cut off the line. Yeah. So, so we, we did get that. we did get kinda lucky in that sense. So yeah, for sure. If there's something you really need worth whether you're in the running of the nerds or you're waiting and then casually making your way downtown you need to prioritize your games yeah come up with your top five uh is it because there's a special promo that's you know if for every sale of this game you get this special card or something or in my case that was a game that released like a month or two early yeah and things like that are just going to be the first thing to sell and some case like Sky Team or uh, Queen by Midnight, they have different you have different amounts of units each day. Mm-hmm. So if they completely sell out day one, don't give up hope. You can try again throughout the weekend. Uh, some games like Lunar Dial, they sold out day one. I, I wasn't expecting them to sell out. I purchased this game, this game for my wife. And they weren't expecting to sell out, obviously, yeah. because I went to get it day one and they were like, we don't have any more. I'm like, oh, are you getting more in tomorrow? They're like, no. no. <laughs> like, come back tomorrow, scan this QR code and you can order it online. And when it releases, we'll ship it to you. And I'm like, super cool. Uh, now, they did have enough pins. Yeah. <laughs> so they had, if you pre got the game there, you got a special pin with it. So if you bought it on their store and showed them that you ordered it, they gave you a pin, which was very nice of them. Yeah. And uh, that was just them not realizing the popularity of their IP. Right. Right. So they didn't realize that they were going to have to do what other companies were doing, like Darrington Press, like having to set aside a certain number of things or like they did with Lorcana, like basically holding back sales on a daily basis. Lorcana should be its own topic. Somebody could get something. Do you want to hit on Lorcana a little bit? That didn't do that. So, yeah, Lorcana is one of those situations where uh, I'm trying to think if we're going to have another 
Lorcana episode uh, coming up here. I know it's going to be there, but it's not going to be as big. I don't think it's going to be as big. This was the initial release of mm-hmm. Lorcana. And I think it'll be big. It's going to be big. But this was what happened last year, which if you're unfamiliar with it, was a, a show in of its own. Because yes. they they grossly underestimated the amount of people that wanted to get Lorcana. Mm-hmm. So they which, didn't Which, those who it. don't know, is a Disney-based, a Disney-based card, based game. IP card Similar game. Similar to like yeah. a Magic the Gathering, stuff like that. Yeah. And they didn't really know how it was going to go. And they ended up... Well, actually, they didn't. The crowd ended up controlling themselves mm-hmm. in the beginning uh, and creating a queue for this game. Many, many, many hours before Way door Way before, opening. yeah, that was unsanctioned. Mm-hmm. And it didn't fall in line with what the convention itself wanted to do. So the convention decided to change everything and say, well, this is not a sanctioned line. It's actually going to start over here, far away from the beginning of that line. Yeah which caused a a stampede of people trying to secure their spot in line and not getting it, you know, because you have to imagine some of these people lined up at the very head of this fake line, like hours and hours in advance, and now they're being told that the line is on the other side of the convention center. And by the time they get there, they're no longer first in line. They just wasted all their time. They're all of it. Way hours behind where they were. And it caused like an issue. It was bad. Yeah, it was bad. And then they ended up fixing it the next day by doing sanctioned lines. So they actually planned it ahead. And even then it was insane. Even then it was was like what you could line up at like 6 p.m. Yes. Sanctioned line. You could line up at 6 p.m. You weren't supposed to leave the line. Nope. There was like no getting back in line sort of situation. So I, I assume if you had a buddy, you could go to the restroom really quick and come back. Yeah. But if you were alone, you got to talk them into yeah. letting you back in, I guess. Yeah. You're just they were serving like coffee and coffee stuff. Coffee and donuts. And, yeah. And like, you know. Which they, there are people happy to do it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's just, whoo. But do keep that in mind. If you are after something that is an extreme IP, so something that is going to be very limited or have repercussions. So like with Lorcana, there were specific cards that you could only get for this convention. You could get a special Mickey. And it was getting stuff way in advance. Yes. Um, oh, yeah. Way before so the game released. If you have anything like this I on say your way list, before. It was a couple weeks, It was a couple right? weeks before. A couple yeah. weeks, and then you got this special And you, you know, got a special Mickey. promo card that's yeah. worth Gen Con. It was like the first promo, yeah, essentially, first for this promo, thing, other yeah. than some of the details. 23 stuff but yeah if you're interested in something that you think might be a limited ip like that do your research ahead of time oh yeah just totally. to make sure that you know what's going to be going on so you can plan for it mm-hmm. now like i said i don't know what we're gonna have as far as uh, the big air quotes lorcana type situations at this convention i know lorcana is going to be there and it's going to be pretty big i don't think it's going to be as bad because now i think they're really more prepared for it and the situation is different this this year i agree yeah, I know Lorcana specifically. Like uh, to get their, they do have a promo card this year. Mm-hmm. You have to like participate in a game. In a game, it's not it, just yeah. like a hey, buy a thing, blah blah blah. Plus, you know, it's already released. It's not going to be as nuts. I still think it's big though. Yeah, I think we're going to see some num- num- numbers, you know, from it. Um, some other numbers I want to touch on real quick is uh, three five two three five four two zero eleven. That is the number for the venerable Viking. Oh, so we were at a we were at a little local convention essentially recently, and uh, this gentleman realized uh, who we were and was like, "Here, take these, please." And he gave us uh, these D and D themed coasters, like stone coasters that he made himself. Mine says, "What doesn't kill you gives you XP." Mine is uh, when all you have is a dwarven hammer. Every problem is a dwarven nail. Right. Uh, he asked nothing in return. So, of course, we asked him for a business card, so we give him a little shout-out. He yeah. does online sales, and you can call him, order stuff online. I think he does some custom stuff and everything, too. But he is the Venerable Viking, uh, the fantasy, sci-fi, Viking, and horror things, uh, wood art, custom gifts, RPG accessories, um, things including... Uh, dice trays, dice boxes, HP counters, dice jails, drink coasters, rune jewelry, boxes, chests, and candle holders. Uh, yep, uh, and does confirm. Uh, they do custom work. It says no extra charge for the custom stuff. So that is awesome. A local creator around our area and just gave us some cool stuff. So we figured the least we could do was give him a little shout out here yeah. on the show. I like local D&D themed creators too. It's fun. Exactly. Uh, next in the list, uh, watch out, y'all. You got that wide load. You know what I'm saying? 
He's talking about me. Why are you making that face? <laughs> He's talking about me. <laughs> uh, you got to be careful of your surroundings, y'all. Do you have? Are you? Are you out there with one of them giant game science backpacks? <laughs> Turning corners like ninety degree, like arr, arr, freaking wiping people out. Yeah, that's me. You got, you gotta, you gotta watch out for hey, that. I was wearing that giant game science backpack to carry your giant. Well, game maybe you should be more careful. They weighed it. fifty pounds for one game. It was okay, so heavy. thank you very much. At least we played it a lot and gotten our monies out of it. Right? Yeah. Yeah. We'll play it one day. No, if you are <laughs> next if you're buying game. a lot of games, uh, a good sized backpack is amazing. Good size, good support. Yeah, good size and good support. So that way you have something to carry around all the stuff without having to make constant trips back to your car or back to your hotel room. But mm -hmm. do watch yourself with a giant backpack. I was trying to be very aware of my surroundings. I always and do he try is. to. Yeah. He's a giant of a man. He's used to this. Right, I've got to. Um, <laughs> and my backpack was even larger. So I was trying really hard to make sure that I was, you know, knew where I was and that I wasn't going to take anybody out. Yeah. And there are a lot of people that are not that nice <laughs> about it that will just turn a corner with a giant backpack and almost take out small children and whole displays of things. Uh, I saw it multiple times. Oh, I got yeah. hit by bags uh, a couple of times. Uh, so just be mindful of your surroundings because this Please. is going to be a very crowded convention. There's a lot of people here. There's a lot of people moving around. Um, you just got to be aware of what everybody else is doing around you. Mm -hmm. And it's good for you to be aware too because a lot of people aren't. And if you're not paying attention and somebody stops right in front of you or tries to cut you off because they're trying to get with their friends or something like that, it's very easy to clip somebody or, yeah. And that's that, that one right there, cutting people off. That's going to happen. Oh, you're yeah. going to do it to other people. Oh yeah. You're going to cut There's somebody off too. There's just so much, right? Yeah. Like you want to get from, from here to five feet this direction and you've been waiting like two minutes for traffic to stop. Traffic will not stop. Yeah. Sometimes you just got to go. So I get it. Just be just be courteous to others. Mm -hmm. And if you have a giant bag or anything similar to that, just be aware of that too. Yeah. Um something we'd had here that uh actually caught you off guard a little bit. Oh yeah. One big thing at Gen Con, and it it's totally different than a lot of other conventions. Uh cards is king. <laughs> uh tap to pay in some instances. Uh, cash is usually accepted it's usually okay cards are almost always okay and in a lot of cases uh people only accept digital currency like a la credit card debit card the concession like official in you know convention center concession areas are card only they do not take cash uh some vendors are card only they do not take cash I did not last year, granted, bajillion vendors. I did not run into any vendors that were cash only. Um, though I did have cash in card on me. But in one case, I had uh, our sage from work had me picking up a game for him. And he sent me nothing but cash with me. And some of the games he wanted, they only took card. And I had to dip into my own money to pay for his things. <laughs> yeah, I didn't really think about this at all because I didn't take hardly any cash with me last year. Uh, because I didn't have any money, but <laughs> <laughs> like not I, much has changed. I had a credit card uh, that I was using last year, uh, so it didn't really dawn on me because I didn't have cash, so I didn't use cash. I was just using a credit card or you know my debit card in most cases, so I didn't even think about it. And I you know have been trying to save up for this event, and I have been saving cash for this. And then when you mentioned uh, you know cards greater than cash, I was like, did you mean greater than? <laughs> because is cards really better than cash? Because isn't usually cash is king? <laughs> That's when you're all like, no, no, card is king here. Yeah, card is yeah. king. So I didn't really think about that. It's a lot easier for some of the vendors to want to keep sense. track of. There's no you know cash register or lockbox or anything like yep. that. And you're talking that many people. It also speeds up a lot of transactions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I was I was picking up with something for our associate, and I had his cash. There was one instance where, like you know, I'm paying with cash, and they had to break open a thing, get the change, and. People are waiting behind me. The line's getting longer because I'm over here paying with, you know, 20s when they've all got their, like, Apple cards and everything else ready to Come pay. On, Grandpa. Yeah. It's no, I'm just, writing you know, that Then check. they hand you it and you're, like, trying to get it all ready. So you put it back in the envelope that they give you to hold all their currency. And it's just, uh, just have some cash for sure. Yeah. Definitely recommend always having some cash just in case. Whomever, definitely bring card. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Because the card was going to let you get some things at the block party. Wee! Yeah, block party sounds like there's going to be some uh, real cool hipping and hopping going on. 
uh, outside, uh, which there might be. There's going to be some music. It's going to help drown out some of the trains. <laughs> uh, but really what the block party is, is a butt ton of food trucks. Yeah. From basically event start to event close. There's going to be food trucks galore. Breakfast food trucks, lunch food trucks, uh, drinks uh, of all kind. <laughs> Caffeinated, alcoholic, uh, and everything in between. Some offering unlimited soda with the purchase of a very expensive mug. And others uh, letting you roll a d20 and taking 20% off your drink if you get an extra 20. Nice. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah. The block party was pretty neat. Uh, I liked it. I was uh, very confused about what it was because of the name block party. 100%. Um, I did not realize it was food last year. I had no idea what there. it was. And we're talking about there's a block party. And then we were like, oh, I guess there's going to be like a like a little outside party of some sort. Yeah. They're probably going to sell drinks or something like that. But I like legit took it like literally a block Same, party 100 uh, but then they're like oh it's this is the food trucks this is where the food is this is food <laughs> this is the food that's not the inside convention center yep. food because there is uh some food on the inside of the convention center um but the block party is where all your food trucks are so this is why your yep. specialty food vendors and everything like that are yep. which you also said that they are expanding this year right they've expanded to add uh more seating yep they've added more shade this year thank goodness uh, and supposedly they're gonna make it easier to get inside of the Lucas Oil Stadium to like enjoy your food and uh, drink inside with some uh, air conditioning. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm stoked. I get, uh, what is it? It's two free coffees this year, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm very excited about that. <laughs> uh, player's Handbook. Yeah, woo. If you know, you know. Um, <laughs> what, um, do you have any recommendations? I know people like Island Noodles a lot. Hotbox Pizza. Yeah, Hotbox Pizza is a big They're one. They're pretty solid. Um, the noodles place looked amazing. We ended up not eating there. But I keep hearing how good these noodles are. They I have to get the noodles this time. so good. Yeah, it looks amazing. Mm -hmm. It looks really, really good. The place, though, uh, and I'm, I wish you would have asked me this before we sat down. Are you talking about the steak place? The steak place. I can't remember the name either. Um, it's a number. And I don't know what the number steakhouse is. Steakhouse something? It's something steakhouse or 32 steak. I, there's oh, a number. Maybe. I think there's a number associated there's a with it. There's a steak-themed restaurant There's a truck. local place. Yeah. Yes. And, uh, they had local. basically steak burritos. They yes, also for, had steak that's, sandwiches. That's the big one. But yeah. The, when you think about this place, and they really, what they advertise is at, during lunch hours, so to speak, they had like a Philly cheese steak. Um, but during breakfast, and they, this was very low key because it was, you know, everyone's kind of just heading into the convention. They had this massive steak and cheese egg burrito. It was so good. It was what, like 10 bucks for this burrito? Yeah, it was it a was, little pricey, but well, oh we my saw gosh. it because we were in line for coffee. Yeah. Right. And then somebody came by with this like massive burrito with a whole newborn child yeah in it their was hands huge yeah and it was like it was delicious yeah and we were like how much was that when we heard the price basically we jumped out of line we left line <laughs> yeah to go over there and then get it because it was just that good it was nuts uh i was so delicious though and to be fair to this place we went back at lunch and got the uh, philly cheesesteak also delicious house made chips delicious uh if you're there at breakfast hours there was this little ma and daughter donut food truck Oh yeah, I forgot really about good the little donut donuts. food truck. Yeah. Like, there's just so many options. Wizards of the Coast had an ice cream thing last year that was fine. <laughs> I don't think they're there again, but you know. You got it, right? I didn't I get got it. it. Yeah, yeah, I, I got say, it. I didn't get that, yeah. <laughs> it had blue sprinkles. It was it was really hot. I wanted ice cream. <laughs> I'm I weak. Think, I think my standout um for for the food was the pizza. Yeah, was oh, that the Queen's Hambit? Of the Queen's Hambit, yeah. yeah. Which I, you know, I got it because you know I thought you know eh, it sounds like a gimmicky, you know, and it'll be something interesting. <laughs> but it ended up being like amazing, like like legit, really, really good food. And I I don't know if I'm gonna like the pizza this year though. The Dorito one, the Dorito pizza, we'll yeah. Because <laughs> I don't know if Doritos belong on a pizza, yeah. but maybe maybe they know better than we do. Uh, I really want to get their breadsticks. Oh, the walking, the walking sticks? sticks. Yeah, the walking sticks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that so. was really, really good. I was trying to find the name of this place while we were talking no um, because there are so, so, so many food trucks that were even there just mm -hmm. last year. And I like I have no idea which one it is. It's not a I, I was wrong. It doesn't have a, a number in it because none of these actually have that. OK, so I Maybe. don't know. We'll have to figure it out. Well. Apologies, steak place. 
Uh, but your food you will, is really good. Your food's really good, and we will see you. Um, so yeah, I guess uh, that's it for us making ourselves hungry for now. Uh, but definitely recommend. I understand uh, food trucks all day, every day get expensive. Check them out at least once a day if you can. Um, totally understand. Uh, bringing a bottle of like a container that you can fill with water while you're on the show floor. Yeah, is awesome that they have these hydration stations all over the convention center where you can fill up your water bottles. Uh, they do tend to get warmer as the forty thousandth person has used them. The water's not always like ice cube cold no but it's still clean drinkable free water <laughs> that's what i was gonna say it may not be like super cool but water is water when you are dying of thirst on yes. a convention store and don't uh, don't Lord. get to the point where you're dying of thirst please stay hydrated it's important yeah we i bought a water bottle specifically for this trip um, just so that I would have a water bottle on me at all times. Yeah. So that I could refill at the stations and everything like that just because I knew I was going to be walking around. I was going to be thirsty Same. a lot. Yep. Um, another thing, uh, speaking of the water refill stations, usually near some of the restrooms. Yeah. Do not, if you care about your, uh, <laughs> I was going to say, your, if you care about your olfactory like system, right? Uh, don't use the first ones you see explore right there's Con so many there's so many restrooms that are not the ones people are going to use constantly find your own special place deep within the convention center you know it's going to be quieter it's going to be cleaner untouched untouched yeah you'll be the first bare bottom to crest the seat <laughs> all day possibly uh and then never let it go don't tell anyone where you found it keep it your secret place because the other ones will slowly start to break down and <laughs> fall into ruin. <laughs> and I don't know if it's that the staff just can't keep up or that they're not brave enough to it's touch it. It's a lot it. of people. It's so, so many, many people. people. Yeah. But just, just know there are other options other than like the main ones you're going to see when you walk in the door. Yeah. That's Second it. floor is good for that. Second floor is great for that. <laughs> I'm not telling you where mine is. Don't even ask. <laughs> um, speaking of the restrooms, uh, that's a bad segue. The Lucas Oil Stadium. <laughs> well, I was going to be like, where, how is he segueing from restrooms to the Lucas Oil Stadium? There's they do have restrooms. Some restrooms. And they're actually really nice. There so, we go. Yeah, they were. They're very good restrooms because they are made for large crowds of people because yeah. it's a stadium. So those restrooms are made for it. Um, but yeah, interesting segue. <laughs> <laughs> you knew what I was going to get to, obviously. The yeah, but I didn't know how. <laughs> I'm like, oil? <laughs> Lucas? <laughs> I'm not sure. I was going to say the restroom of the convention center, but it was mean. It didn't make any sense. It was just unnecessary entirely. I just... Uh... No. So, yeah, Lucas Oil Stadium. <laughs> uh, we mentioned it briefly earlier, you know, especially yeah. place to eat and stuff like that in the underground tunnel. Um, the convention center, the exhibit hall and all that, the exhibit hall is the main thing, right? It's like 10 to six. It's where all the booths are and everything else. For the most part. Um, and some of the hallways and everything, you'll find other like split off booths and such. The Lucas oil stadium has a ton of rooms that events are going to happen in ticketed events, etc. But it also has, uh, concessions in there. Uh, this is where you're going to be buying the uh, early release of the 2024 revision of the Dungeons and Dragons Player's Handbook. Um, this is also where you'll be buying the 50th anniversary of the Dungeons and Dragons uh, stamps from the USPS booth. And there are lots of other tabletop things as far as also the, uh, what is it, the gaming library? Which I believe you need oh, yeah, reservations right. yeah. you or need generics reservations to like tick out, it, yeah. you know, check out games and stuff like that too. But the main thing here is don't ignore the Lucas Oil Stadium. It's not going to be as busy. There's not as much to do as like over the main convention center. But definitely check it out at least once. You go down underground through that little tunnel. There's going to be some local vendors and stuff selling things. Um, check all that out. Go over there. Check it out. Walk down on the uh, you know field essentially. And just like, you know, take it all in. See what's there this year. You might find something that you, you're glad to have found, right? Something you would have missed if you didn't just walk next door. It's not closed. It is a open facility, and yeah. it is also part of Gen Con. <laughs> yeah. 
check it out. I'm glad you touched on the tunnel because uh, I do want to talk about Secret that. Secret tunnel. Uh, was because you can walk to the Lucas Oil Stadium from like the block party above ground, and mm -hmm. you can just walk into like the a doors and have those open. Uh, however, um, you should take the tunnel from the convention center at least one time uh, because there are a lot of smaller vendors um, that take up that tunnel space. Yep. Because obviously that tunnel space is probably the last vendor spaces that they actually sell or some of the cheapest that they probably sell. So what you'll see down there is some smaller vendors, not big game publishers, yeah. sometimes smaller crafters, uh, artists. There are some really small artists that set up shop down there yeah. uh, to sell everything from like drawings to sticker sheets to handmade um, signs yeah, handmade signs and stuff like that so there's a lot of really cool vendors that you would miss if you never take the tunnel to lucas oil stadium also if you're participating in true dungeon i believe this is also the location you'd go to to find that to find that okay mm -hmm. cool. so yeah it's a it's a cool area to check out um we're re getting towards our wrap up here as far as uh tips and tricks and just stuff to keep in mind really uh, but one big thing to keep in mind is that this convention never sleeps. It is just running and running and running and running and just going and just, it's insane. Uh, the main exhibit hall, which you think of as your 10 to 6, like, oh, when that's done, it's done. No! Yeah. Right next door, things are still happening. There's people playing war games and 40K and, and Bolt Action and Star Wars Legion and all kinds of stuff. In the hallways, there's people playing Werewolf to the wee hours of the night. Oh, yeah, it was crazy, like, just walking through a hallway and seeing, like, a group of 20 people playing werewolf mm -hmm. off into the corner. Panels happening in hotels, like, just people setting up shop um, in one of the ballrooms of an adjacent hotel. I think it might, have been the, that might be the Marriott. Uh, just open game tables, just people, like, hanging out, put a little flag on the table, like, looking for players. Like, it just never sleeps. And you don't have to be staying at those hotels to, like, you know, take advantage of that. Uh, it's just super convenient if you are. Yeah. Uh, but yes, when the convention floor closes, feel free to go grab some dinner, go to a hotel, rest. It's important uh, to get some shut eye eventually. But you don't have to. <laughs> you you can't you can't stay here. But you don't have to go home. Yeah. Is essentially what they're saying, uh, and it's rad. I swear they only close the exhibit hall to give the exhibitors. A break yeah and so they can go do something so they can go do something <laughs> yeah and then they'll be back first thing in the morning mm -hmm. but it's it's wild it is an amazing intense four games four days of gaming uh just just brace yourself and after you're done bracing yourself pace yourself hey. <laughs> because uh you're not gonna do everything you want to do don't tell me how to live i'm letting you know right now don't even try <laughs> don't do it get some sleep at least minimum three hours a night. I don't care if you're burning the midnight oil. Three hours, please, for, please get some sleep. Eat at least at least a good meal or two a day. Maybe some light snacking. Drink lots of water, and do it all over again the next day. Because <laughs> it's gonna be a blast, and it sucks when it's over, and you want to just just get as much in as you can. You know, Jin Khan's amazing. But just don't push yourself too hard, especially those that are uh, traveling via V like car, uh, because when you're all worn out on Sunday and you've got to drive home, that's ugh. yeah, if very you're exhausted length. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So just do what you can, have a great time, and then next year do some other things and. Yeah. Just, you know, don't freak out if you can't do everything. There's just so much it's stuff. Too much to it, do it even all. Even just looking at the entire convention hall is a chore in and of itself. And we were still discovering things like hours before we left. Day four. On the last day. We saw multiple booths for we the first never seen time before. <laughs> that we never laid eyes on. Yeah. In all four days of going to the exhibit hall. It it's just I swear they're adding new booths. Like while we were there. Yeah. It's insane. Um even more important than all of that and, you know, keeping healthy and sleep and stuff like that. Uh, if you see us, come say hi. Hey. It's the most important thing for your entire Gen Con trip. If you see True Strike Podcast, come a little high five or something, you know. That's it. We like talking to people. We like talking to it's people. It's fun. <laughs> That's no, true. you do meet a lot of really cool people. We Absolutely. met a lot of really cool people last year. We hope to meet a lot of cool people this year, mm -hmm. including you. Ted. Oh, Vanessa, sorry. I didn't see you back there. 
Uh, so Ted and Vanessa, if you see us there, definitely come say hi. Um, the rest of you, um, you know, we'll I guess you names. can say hi too. We'll learn you. We'll get we'll get to know you. Yeah. <laughs> um, anything else? Probably. Honestly, it's so much. There's so much. We'll make sure to to loop that into next year's. And I'm guide. sure that there's going to be stuff that we discover this year while we're there that we oh, didn't for sure. even consider or think about. And what's changed, and what do we have to learn, what adapt, etc. Yeah, it's going to be great. I'm so excited. Uh, by the time, oh, by the way, this is pre-recorded. <laughs> by the time you're listening to this, we are in the car driving uh, to Indiana. Yes. Uh, it is. We are in Florida. It's very far. We have to drive the entire way, uh, straight through. Straight through. We're gonna go to Bucky's twice. So many times. It's twice. <laughs> There's two Bucky's. That's four oh. times because we're coming back. Yes, but that's, that's on the way home. So four times this whole trip. Four times. <laughs> it's gonna be great. <laughs> gonna get so much pulled pork. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I guess if anything happens between now and then, we're recording this the week prior. Yeah. Uh, if anything happens between now and then, uh, we won't react to it because it ha- didn't happen for us yet. But uh, hello, future us, if we're listening to this while in the car. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of listening to us while in the car, uh, we are on the road to a thousand subscribers. Yay! So if you wouldn't mind helping us get there, we would appreciate it very much, especially you, Ted and Vanessa. Uh, and yeah, that's it. Like, subscribe, all the normal things, right? Yeah. For if you're on YouTube, if you're on any of the uh, podcast services, five stars is appreciated. And thank you very much for listening in. I've been Tyler. And I've been Richard. And we've been True True Strike. Strike. Bye, everyone. See you at Gen Con. See you at Gen Con. Hey, Adventures. Thanks again for joining us today. Please be sure to give us a follow at your favorite podcasting platforms and YouTube. If there's any questions you'd like to write into the show, you can hit us up on X Threads or Instagram. New episodes release every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern. Thank you for listening to True Strike.